Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon, and you are watching Israeli News Live. Those of you that got to see the live broadcast, this is actually a different broadcast because uh, I forgot to turn on the volume part in the, or the sound on the camera here. So uh, nonetheless, uh, this is uh, for the YouTube version of our Israeli News Live, and we have some very serious news. Uh, that is going on in and around the world. One thing that we caught on satellite television from Slo to the Slovak channel on TA3, that is the TA3 News, they're talking about political changes coming to the United States. Uh, now, I'm not quite sure as of yet. Uh, I've got some little bits and pieces on this, but not quite sure yet uh, as of exactly what this means about the political change. Uh, from what I have seen in some of the updates since Israeli, since our live broadcast on live stream, it could be that it is dealing with uh, political prisoners, but, uh, but I'm also concerned because of the Jade Helm exercises that are coming to the United States and what it could mean in that regards there. Could there be other political changes as well that are coming up? Uh, TA3 News was very vague in what they reported on it. Uh, so that also gives us a little bit of concern as well for the American people. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we are very concerned too because many times what the U.S. calls exercise actually in rea reality becomes a real event. We've seen that with uh, when Russia did their documentary on the exercise the U.S. did coming into the Black Sea. And Russia said it was actually not an exercise. They were coming to try to take back Crimea but they saw that Russia was very well prepared to defend it. And the United States and the NATO allies, they backed down in that particular event. Nonetheless, um, a lot of strange things happening in America. We see that the Walmarts, uh, the five of those Walmarts strategically around the United States closed unexpectedly. Uh, had there really been a water issue, according to what the news is reporting, uh, they had plenty of time to be able to give uh, their employees a notice saying that we would have to do renovations and close the stores as a result. But you have to remember, corporations in the United States are owned by the government. So they have to play ball with the way the government says play ball, and the government doesn't want to raise suspicions. And neither has there been permits uh, applied for uh, to be able to do any water uh, or construction work for these stores here. They just basically closed down. Makes you wonder what's going to happen come July in the United States. Uh, in other news, though, let's move right along here. George W. Bush bashes Obama, according to the Newsmax report, uh, an article by Josh Roglin. Very interesting. It says, in a closed-door meeting with Jewish donors Saturday night, former President George W. Bush delivered his harshest public criticism to date against his successor in a foreign policy, saying that the President Barack Obama is being naive about Iran and pending nuclear de deal and losing the war against the Islamic State. Now, you have to keep in mind, this meeting, there was a gentleman there in attendance there uh, that actually transcribed much of what uh, the former president had to say. Uh, and according to the attendee, the transcript, Bush noted that Iran has a new president, Hassan, H Hassan Rouhani. He smooth, Bush said. And you've got to ask yourself if there's a new policy or did, that just, or did they just change the spokesman? Uh, Bush said Obama's plan to lift sanctions on Iran with a promise that they could be snapped back at, in place at any time was not plausible. He also said the deal would be a, would bad for American national security in the long term. You think the Middle East is chaotic now, he states? Imagine what it looks like for our grandchildren. Well, quite frankly, in that case, I don't think it's going to be your grandchildren that you have to can be concerned about, but your own children and even yourselves. What's it going to mean? Because it is becoming a very chaotic and volatile situation. You can catch this article on our uh, Facebook page, Israeli News Live. Dot, uh, excuse me, Israeli News Live on Facebook. We have published all these articles so that you can read them in their entirety. Um, but moving right along, also, according to the TASS News Reg Russian or TASS, the Russian news agency. And by the way, we do Russian news as well as even Middle Eastern news. Not to say that they're right always in their publication in their particular opinion. We have quite frankly come to learn that. 
They all do propaganda, including the United States. The thing is, it gives you the option to see both sides of the picture and to make your own conclusion. Because what I'm about to share with you in, this, in these next few articles clearly is a prophetic and biblical moment that we are seeing the stage set of a fulfilling of Matthew 24, more of, not all of Matthew 24, mind you, where Yeshua himself speaks about the different things that will take place in the end times, but specifically where he says that nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We are watching that. We are on the prepices of this at the very edge of our seats, and it's just a matter of the nations literally going to battle. Okay, so let's watch what it says here. In here it says, Kiev ready to file documents on Crimea accession to Russian to the Hague Court. Now this article, there is a key thing I want you to see in this, so listen closely. Ukraine's Prosecutor General Office of has prepared to file documents on Crimea's accession to Russia to the International Criminal Court, that's the ICC, in The Hague. Deputy Prosecutor General Vitaly Kosko said on Monday, I wonder if he has any stock in Costco in America. Anyway, according to the uh, Varkanova Rada's resolution, materials should be handed over to the government. They are already prepared. We are now consulting foreign experts, the Ukrainian news agency quoted Costco as saying. Here it gets the interesting part. Watch this. General Prosecutor's Office's Office will hand over documents to the cabinet ministers this week. After this, Ukraine will have to ratify the Rome Statute of International Criminal Court. The Rome Statute of International Criminal Court? Are we really living in a Roman society? Well, according to the, uh, to the guides in, in, in Rome, Italy, when we were just there, yes, you are. He said you are Roman citizens. In fact, every U.S. citizen in America that has a Social Security number are Roman citizens indeed. So it's no surprise to see that Ukraine will have to ratify the Rome Statute of International Criminal Court. The Rome Statute. So I guess we are under the Pope's rule. Quite frankly, Italy doesn't run the world, but Rome does. In Rome, Vatican City is where it all happens at. So, on, anyway, they submit the materials on uh, Crimea's accession to the Russian, to the ICC, and the ICC prosecutor will then rule on the initiating of a legal case. You can't even get to the International Criminal Court until you go to the Rome Statute of International Criminal Court. Very interesting. Ukraine Prime Minister Arseniy Yatsenyuk who is nothing but a Vatican puppet to begin with, earlier ordered the Justice Ministry to submit Russian President Vladimir Putin's interview to a Russia TV channel in the film Crimea, The Way Home, to the ICC. The Justice Ministry said it found violations of international law and statements made by Putin and Russian Defense Minister Sergei Soikhu. To me, quite frankly, it is this rogue regime and I'm not talking about the Western Ukraines that really want to have peace and, and be a peaceful nation, but it is the rogue regime that NATO, the United States, have put into power there, such as Arseniy Yatsenyuk here, that have literally gone and are bent on ethnic cleansing of the Russian-speaking people in Eastern Ukraine. They have murdered them, quite frankly. This is one reason why he would like to bring The Way Home, the documentary there, in just bash it to pieces. Why? Because the Russians exposed their ethnic cleansing practices. In fact, if you quite look at it from a quite honest perspective, and believe me, I am no supporter of communism. I wouldn't want to live under communism, not for a moment. I do prefer the American democracy system much better. But if you really take a serious look at it, where has been Russia's aggression in all this? Russia only tried to rescue the president that was, be, that was to be assassinated after he was overthrown, and Russia has sit there to try, and, and they went into Crimea in order to protect the, what, 90% Russian-speaking people there that are not Ukrainian descent in the first place, as well as the eastern Ukraines, they are there to protect them. So yes, but have Russians actually gone in there and invaded and taken over Ukraine? No, they did not. And then sanctions were slapped on Russia as a result. We have to be quite honest, and we must look at this thing and what really is right. But there again, if we look at Vladimir Putin, if we look at President 
uh, Barack Obama or former President George Bush or any of them. They're all part of the elite system without a doubt. They wouldn't be in power if they weren't part of the elite system. So not any of the systems really are good, period. They're all controlled by the Vatican. And, uh, but perhaps President Putin is not playing along with the Pope right now. It's hard to say what exactly is going on in that regards. Anyway, Putin, uh, on an article on the, on, uh, that, that appeared on Reuters, says that Russian annexation of Crimea was, was writing a historical injustice. President Vladimir Putin said Moscow seizure of Crimea write a historical injustice. According to the news agency report on Sunday, citing a new documentary film, the annexation of the Black Sea Peninsula from Ukraine in March 2014 provoked the worst crisis between the West and Russia since the end of the Cold War. Putin said he had no regrets uh, and he says, it's not because the Crimea has a strategic importance in the Black Sea region. It's because this has an element of historic justice. I believe we did the right thing and I don't regret anything. The RIA news agency quoted Putin as saying in the documentary, uh, the president. Uh, Putin also said sanctions imposed by the West after the annexation were aimed, to, aimed at halting Russia's progress as a global power. Yeah, I have to agree with him on that. That is true. The film marking Putin's 15 years in power had already been aired in Russia's Far East. It was scheduled to be shown in the Western Russia um, at 21.30 Moscow time on Sunday. Uh, Crimea was administered as a part of Russia within the Soviet Union until it was transferred to Ukraine in 1954. The peninsula connected to the mainland by a narrow causeway provides the base for the Russian Navy's Black Sea Fleet. It is a strategic interest nonetheless. For Russia it is. Their, their whole fleet is there. It would be very difficult for Russia to turn around and build another base, although they do have their own land that comes to the Black Sea. It would be very difficult to have to rebuild that. So it is a strategic interest nonetheless. Uh, not to mention for the protection of their own people. Now, the conclusion, concluding article that I want to share with you is from the Tehran Times, and this is because, as I said, we're seeing nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And, of course, the nations of the European Union, of the United States, and their allies, NATO, are rising up against Russia. There's going to be a conflict in this. There must come a conflict in order to fulfill the biblical prophecy that Yeshua said in Matthew 24. Nation will rise against nation. But he also said kingdom against kingdom. And now we're seeing what? Iran, which is a kingdom. It is a, uh, it is a um, kingdom and it is rising up against Saudi Arabia. And, and quite frankly, I applaud Saudi Arabia uh, for bombing the Houthis because the Houthis are the Iranian-backed rebels there trying to overthrow the country to do what? To cut off Israel's uh, way in the Gulf of Aqaba, to be able to control what Israel does through the Gulf of Aqaba, to give them a strategic advantage over Israel in a war that they're intending to do against Israel in the very near future. But now we're seeing the kingdoms go against each other, and now Tehran is threatening uh, Saudi Arabia. In an article here in Tehran Times, it says, Iran vows to respond to Saudi Arabia for blocking aid to the Yemenis, <laughs> yeah, to the Houthis. Maybe they should say it more honestly. A top Iranian diplomat has said that Tehran will respond to Saudi Arabia for blocking Iranian cargo planes to send humanitarian aid to the Yemenis. Uh, Deputy Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullahani said that Iran, uh, review, will, will, that Iran will review all options to immediately send humanitarian aid to the Yemenis, the RNA uh, reported on Sunday. He also said Saudi Arabia's aggression against Yemen will bear no result but insecurity in the Middle East region. Amir uh, Abu Dalhani expressed hope that Saudi Arabia would change current wrong approach and play a constructive role in the region. Seems like they are trying to play a constructive role, or are they just supposed to back off and let Iran just totally destroy Yemen, the Yemeni's people and topple the government there so that they can control everything? Nonetheless, we are seeing nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. It is a very serious time, and, uh, and we here at Israeli News Live, we need your help and support in bringing forth the news as well as the teachings that we do at the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. You can give online, IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. Definitely be a part of this and support. We've lost a lot of support because of our stand on, uh, for women in, in the ministry that we've done there. So please be a part of this. I'm Stephen Benoon. You are watching 
Israeli News Live. Shalom.